we're out on the uh, the heathland of Greenham Common today. Um, we've got our Wednesday team of volunteers, so these are people who come out most Wednesdays, um, and we're carrying out heathland management. So over time, the silver birch and the gorse grows up within the heathers, and if we were to leave them, they would eventually outcompete the heather. Um, the heather would be lost or become decreased at least. Um, so we're out cutting back the silver birch um, and encouraging that heather regeneration. I'm currently involved in some heath and restoration work uh, over at Crookham Common and also on Bowdown Woods. Um, what we're doing is trying to reconnect, reconnect some of the existing patches of heathland that we already have, allowing the heathland species, so reptiles like adders, birds like uh, night jars or woodlarks reconnecting their habitats so they can move more freely between therefore their populations can increase and be more robust. The Wildlife Trust they're very much moving in the direction of living landscape projects. Living landscape projects are a really important part of Bebout's work and the whole, all of the Wildlife Trust's work. Um, it's not just about our nature reserves sometimes. We have some fantastic nature reserves that we manage really well, but sometimes in isolation that's not enough. You have small populations of some really important species, but they can't move and spread out. If you lose that one population, that's it, it's gone. A living landscape allows you con to connect some of those really important nature reserves together, allows those populations to move, um, and just makes everything that much more resilient. Uh, well today here we're, um, we're cutting some scrub, some birch scrub uh, that's been growing up over this heath area. Uh, if we don't cut back the birch scrub then this, this area would eventually become woodland um, and we don't want that because there's only a very small amount of heathland left in, uh, in southern England basically and so we're trying to preserve this particular habitat. Uh, we're recycling the materials that we've cut as well, selling them as bean poles and uh, pea sticks. This uh, spring and summer I've been doing lots of invertebrate surveys, um, looking at the bugs um, on the common, primarily to look at whether there's a sufficient food for the brown nesting bird chicks and whether that might be a cause for how well they're doing or not. Um, but also looking, I've been looking at spiders um, and um, another volunteer has, is doing an in-depth beetle survey um, and this year we found a, a very rare spider just from this spot somewhere around here actually. For me what makes Greenham Common such a special place, I mean aside from the history of it, is that it is a really diverse place for wildlife and it's kind of unique in the fact that it's originally an acid heathland but having had an awful lot of concrete on the site, well it was an air base that's changed the soil makeup a little bit and that's brought in a number of species that you'd normally associate with chalk or alkaline soil habitats so it's a real unique mix up here yeah i'd say one of the things that makes greenham so special is its, its accessibility as well it's only five minutes from the town center you can easily cycle up here or walk up here and it's a it's a great place to come out to and, and interact with wildlife my children, luckily, love coming up to the common. Um, they know about the work that I've been doing here. Um, they're quite young. The youngest is five and the eldest is eight. And there's one in the middle as well. So um, they love coming here and helping me search for bugs. Um, we come here for picnics. We've got a dog that we bring um, on a lead, of course. Um, and yeah, it's really nice. It's close, um, but it sort of doesn't feel like you're in Newbury when you're here. It's quite open and the woods, Bowdown Woods opposite as well, they love going there as well.